Hello YouTubers, it is of course I, Trollface the Man, and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are going to make a reflector for a light out of a Pytem, more than likely something that you'll have access to that's quite literally free. Um, so basically, the other day, I was messing around with this UV bulb inside of uh, this device right here to make a portable UV flashlight, but I was having issues because when even shining the bulb away, a lot of the light is coming directly back into my eyes. So I thought, well, I should build a reflector for that, so that way it's not literally shining back into my eyes. I thought of a couple of different ideas, but one of the things that popped into my head was, I got these pie tins over in my scrap aluminum bin. They're just pie tins, eat a pie, rinse them out real quick, throw them in the scrap bin, and I thought, these are like perfect for doing something like that with. And I figured I would give it a shot. And I was figuring, you know, if you can get this uh, to work right, you can make a reflector for potentially, you know, filming, for flashlights, whatever, and again, it is free. I am going to put out a video that's talking about using this for bulbs and using it for work lights, flashlights, and emergency lights along with a whole bunch of testing that when I finish it, I will be sure to link in the description below, but it might be a little while before that comes out. So just as a heads up, it's going to be a very interesting video though. So the first most obvious and pretty much biggest challenge of this is making this fit onto a bulb. Now the obvious thing might be to just cut a hole and stick this bulb in here, but the problem with that is that if it's just a loose hole, this reflector is going to just move around and not want to stay on. So I was thinking, how could I, how could I, I make this where it will hold into place and you can adjust it a little bit? And I thought, straws. Well, more specifically, how straws go into the top of, of plastic cup lids where they have those slits. I was figuring if I actually made little, like, slits in here to to have sort of fingers to grab onto and bend to an extent not only would they want to bite on and hold the reflector onto the bulb it will give me a certain amount of adjustment and that's precisely what i did so i have a little piece of cardboard underneath here and i actually because of the way this pie tin is it already has these circles in here which are very good guides to work by so you could use a, I have a razor knife here, you could use an X-Acto knife, you could use a regular knife, you could even use a pair of scissors if you poked a hole in there first and you cut from the hole. But for me, I'm just going to make a light slice. Be very careful with stuff like this, because obviously there's a serious danger of slicing your fingers. Also, the aluminum when it's cut can be quite sharp, so. Again, very careful. Instead of actually directly cutting, I'm kind of like moving and then pushing down instead of just pulling straight back. I find in this case, oops, that 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 works better. So again, I now I'm gonna go from the center here. Then come around the other side and again do the same thing until I will eventually get this. Very simple, right? Now keep in mind you want to start small and then work your way up. You don't want to start too big in the first place and thereby end up with a ruined hole. Gee, that um, came out much different than I was thinking, but uh, yes. So anyways, now what we can do is just take the bulb like this and insert it in. And we have these, now because I did push these out a little bit more, I'm actually gonna pull this out. I'm gonna bend them back straight. And again, this aluminum is very sharp, so be careful. I'm gonna bend these back down and then reinsert this back in. And hopefully what we should have is we should have um, a reflector that does a pretty decent job of staying on and moving with the light, which you can see it is actually staying on fairly decently. But beyond that, with a bulb like this, you can take something like a hose clamp and 
put it around the little aluminum or aluminum fingers, if you prefer that. <laughs> um, and then tighten it very lightly. Again, light is key around there, but if you tighten it very lightly, that will stay permanently affixed into place. The same thing goes with CFL bulbs. You can see I have a CFL bulb wedged into this one. Again, you can very easily use a hose clamp, especially because these bases are very flat and straight. Use a hose clamp in order to clamp it on there and then you have a permanent light reflector. Things are a little bit more complicated with bulbs like this though. This is uh, just a standard filament style UV bulb. The reason why it's different with these is because um, you probably don't want to hose clamp to glass. Sometimes this glass is pressurized. Um, for example, I think a lot of these ones have helium inside of them uh, in order to help dissipate heat. I don't know, because this is a lower wattage one. It's probably not going to have helium inside of it. It's probably just going to have air. But sometimes they are pressurized. Sometimes they have gases in them. Um, so it's just best not to put um, pressure on them like this. And the issue is, is that let's say that this is a socket inside of a light. And if I just have this wedged on here, even though if these aluminum fingers can hold onto the light itself, one, you're gonna get a lot of bleed around them, and two, there's the issue that these fingers could potentially slip down into the light socket here and make contact with the uh, outer part of the light, this metallic base of the light, which is going to mean that this plate is potentially going to uh, become connected with the neutral side and depending on where the best path flow is for the current could potentially have power come through you. So for example, the power comes through this bulb and wants to return to the neutral, which it, this base is in connection with. This aluminum fixture is tutting, touching that base. You touch this and then you ground yourself. Some of that current may decide to pass through you instead of just going uh, to the return on the breaker. So there's a, a couple of ways to, to deal with this. One, if you have an extended base like this, now this is a standard house plug to uh, an A19 um, adapter. I think it's A19, it's the, these bases right here. Um, so you can plug this into a wall, but they have these adapters for just the socket. So what they'll be is they'll be a male uh, A19, to a female A19 that might just extend uh, your bulb up, you know, an inch or two. In which case you could affix the reflector directly to that, even again using the hose clamp method, because most of them are, are smooth, flat bases. You could just affix the reflector to that and have a permanent reflector um, based off of the uh, the base, the little extender base that you have. Or alternatively, if you wanted to attach it directly to the bulb, the reflector directly to the bulb, what I would recommend in that case, and I don't have electrical tape to demonstrate it, I should use electrical tape with this. But what you can also do, but again, you do so at your own risk because this is definitely a lot less safe. You can take, when you have the bulb screwed in, and again, just pretend that this is like a regular light socket or whatever. And tape up the base with electrical tape so that way that that aluminum, those fingers can no longer go down inside of there and short out. Don't do this. You, you could get away with doing it with a bulb like this because they tend to generate very little heat, especially at the base. Um, so you're not worried you having to worry about it potentially heating up the tape or insulating the bulb too much that it's going to burn it, especially because this one's only two watts. If you try doing something similar with one of these bulbs, these bases can get hot enough to melt plastics. And you definitely wouldn't do it with an incandescent light. Just that not at all. That don't do that with an incandescent light. Specifically, these LED lights that don't get particularly hot at the base. But even still, don't assume just because they're a filament style bulb that they don't get hot at the base. This is something that you would need to 
feel when the ball was running at some point and make your own personal judgment. Is that going to be too hot or not? But if you do uh, basically cover up that potential contact there, you can see I, I've now slid this onto this base and it's actually holding really good. And again, there's not that risk of the contacts uh, potentially shorting out. Um, you could even, again, if it's a very low um, powered light or low heat generating light, you could potentially even take another piece of tape and wrap it around these fingers here like you might with the hose clamp in order to permanently affix that in place. And because we're now putting it lower on the bulb, we're gonna collect more of this light inside of the reflector and blast it out versus if, if again, it was mounted like way up here. Yeah, again, this is just a very simple uh, little reflector that we can make for free that can be used for various things. Now, I looked online, I seen a couple of these for candles. I have not seen anyone make these for bulbs. So I think this is actually a very cool concept for um, a bulb reflector. Um, and super easy to do, as you can see. It's literally a couple of minute process. More time explaining than actually doing. I think it's time though to actually test it out. So what I am going to do is I am going to set up my camera and I'm gonna take a couple of pictures and we're going to see how much light collection this has pre-reflector and post-reflector, which should be a pretty simple process of just taking uh, the pictures more or less at the same exposure level. Starting with the front-facing chip-style LED, we really don't see much improvement from the reflector. But this isn't too surprising given its front bias already. In the distance we can see a little extra light. Next with the filament style LED we can see a massive increase in front biased light as the dish collects it and projects it forward. especially in the distance. Moving on to the CFL, again we see a massive increase in front-facing light as the simple Pi 10 acts as a rudimentary but decent light reflector, with some weak light collimation involved too. Lastly, for fun, we try out the 2 watt UV bulb. This has probably one of the most apparent increases in output I find. Maybe it has to do with the throw of the light and the reflector being optimized best for its angle. I don't know, but the difference is pretty clear. Well, thank you guys very much for watching. I appreciate you checking out this video. And if you um, like this video, please remember to hit that like button. If you feel like subscribing, please hit that subscribe button. If you feel like donating, I do have a Patreon uh, that's linked below. Uh, so that's all very much appreciated. I also like to thank my Patreons for their current support. I appreciate you guys immensely. And also, I think it's worth mentioning too, if you wanted a more diffused light for this, you could use some light grit sandpaper and scuff up the surface. Uh, if you wanted a less diffused light, you could actually use some polishing compound and polish up the surface. If you wanted a colored diffused light, or you just wanted a white diffused light, you could paint this white, a very bright white, and it will provide white diffused light. Let's say you wanted like a reddish toned diffused light, you could paint the inside of this red and let the light reflect off of the red, uh, casting a little bit of a reddish tint to it. There's actually, especially seeing as you can get these for quite literally free, you could have dozens of these with different colors and everything else that you could use just, you know, there that you make for free or relatively free, depending on if you consider buying some pie and eating pie a cost. I don't consider that a cost. I consider that a 
benefit or a reward, but, you know, maybe you don't really like pies. I don't know. But anyways, guys, thank you very much for watching, and bye!